if you want truthful answers from a narcissistic person, ask them what their exes did to them and then listen carefully as they're often describing themselves. When it comes to narcissistic people, they cannot help but to tell on themselves in one format or another. You've either got the covert narcissist who has to tell on themselves by blaming somebody else, sort of seeing your reaction to how you would respond to somebody else doing something to them, which is actually what they did to the other person. Or you've got the overt narcissist who's arrogant enough to believe they're in the right that boast about how they've mistreated other people, yet they do it in a way to gain admiration from those around them or place fear into those around them. Now we can all have an ex that we're not going to speak too fondly of. However, when it comes to someone saying that their ex cheated on them, a genuine person, the ex usually cheated on them. And if you actually know the history, you can see that the ex actually cheated on them. When it comes to a narcissistic person, they're going to claim the ex cheated on them. However, you'll later find out when the narcissist cheats on you that it's the narcissist that does all the cheating. Narcissistic people blame others. Narcissistic people don't particularly see a wrongdoing in their own behaviour in a way where they should stop behaving in that manner, just that you might perceive something as wrong, so they need to lie their way out of the situation, so they don't have to face the consequences for their actions, as they believe they're entitled to do as they please, and they are arrogant enough to not recognise their own inadequacies, they're too busy blaming everybody else. Narcissistic people want you to take a dislike to the ex because they don't want you communicating with the ex. The narcissist is envious of the ex for one reason or another, has a strong dislike, has lost control of the ex, so they're seeking to gain you onto their side to punish the ex. They're seeking to triangulate you, they want to get you to work harder to fight for the narcissist. They want you to work harder to treat the narcissist right because we can all make mistakes. Genuine people who make a mistake, make a mistake, learn from it, apologise for it and don't repeat it. Narcissistic people make a mistake, blame somebody else and repeat the mistake. So they're looking to get you to work harder to look after them. The narcissist is looking to undermine the ex's reputation. So when the ex speaks out about what the narcissist actually did, it sounds very similar to what the narcissist is saying, only the narcissist has got their lies in there first and people are already discrediting the ex's account of events. The narcissist is going to lie about the ex because they want people to feel sorry for the narcissist, they want people to sympathise with the narcissist, they want people to look poorly upon the ex and they want the people to enable the narcissist in their smick and campaign against the ex. Narcissistic people often do tell you the truth, they just tell you the truth the other way round. So everything the narcissist did to the ex or everything the narcissist drove the ex to, the narcissist is going to be accusing the ex of doing it to them. And if you stay with that narcissistic person, you will then find the narcissist doing to you everything they claimed the ex did to them. If you've met somebody and you've got with somebody via them cheating on their partner, to be with you. You're already in an untrustworthy, untrustworthy relationship because they've already cheated on who they are with to get with you. Now, not all narcissistic people will be honest about this, so you won't even know that they already have a partner when they got with you. However, at some point when you find out, that's a big red flag that it's time to leave.
Narcissists tell twisted lies, they tell half-truths, they exaggerate stories. So a half-truth is when a narcissist will devalue someone so much that they become so full of anxiety that they don't do things and they are full of that much insecurity. They might turn to stuff like a drink to help self-soothe themselves, which yes, is something they might need to work on. However, a narcissistic person is going to use this to accuse the ex of being a full-blown alcoholic, when it's usually the narcissist you'll often find is the one that likes the drink. A narcissist might not be allowed to see their children from a previous relationship. So the truth is they can't see their children. However, the narcissist is going to twist it and claim that the ex made up lies about them. So they're no longer allowed to see their children. Narcissistic people flex. They falsify a fact. They take a factual event of something that's happening and then they falsify the information. They lie about what is happening so they can evade exposure for their actions. They'll not tell you why they aren't allowed to see their children. They'll just blame the ex for why they're not allowed to see their children. So one of the first lies a narcissistic person might tell about their ex is how their ex trapped them. How their ex just moved in with them and then wouldn't leave. Now we all know nobody falls in love faster than a narcissist who needs a place to stay. So when they claim that someone moved in with them and wouldn't leave, we can question whether that ex is a narcissistic person or not. However, when it comes to a narcissist, they'll be claiming the ex moved in with them and wouldn't leave. However, they'll be wanting to move in with you very quickly or they'll be stopping over and not leave. They'll be moving more and more things in and they will justify this with, yes, but when, when you know you've found the one, it, it works to move things quickly. So on one hand, they're claiming how the ex trapped them move things on too fastly. And then on the other hand, they're moving things along very swiftly with you. They might claim the ex trapped them with a baby. Either the female lied about birth control or the male messed with the birth control. Whether it's male or female, they're going to accuse the ex of trapping them with a baby. And if they have a child with the ex, then it can seem like they're telling the truth. However, usually the dates don't add up. They can say they trap them with a baby, yet the couple had their first child after three years of dating, four years of dating. Or you'll often find those that had them really quickly into the relationship, there's a big age gap. And the parent of the child, the parents, the ex that the narcissist is smearing, saying trap them, was very, very young. So they've been groomed into having that child for the narcissist and then the narcissist has abandoned them. The narcissist might not see other children that they have. However, you'll notice when it comes to a narcissist, they'll be saying all this about their ex, but they'll be wanting a baby with you. They'll be wanting a child with you. They'll be future faking that wedding and that child with you. So on one hand, they're accusing the ex of trapping them with a baby. And then on the next hand, they're wanting one really quickly with you. They can say that the ex's behaviour changed towards them, that everything was lovely and everything was working out really well and everything was going well. And then one day the ex's mood changed. They became moody and aggressive and sulky and they weren't allowed to do their activities that they normally do because it would upset the ex. And as this can happen in a narcissistic relationship, when the narcissist is love bombing, so for three months, six months, a year, all is going really, really well. And then all of a sudden the narcissist changes. It's believable when somebody tells that story to you, especially if you've also lived it. 
However, you have to kind of look, have they been single in their adult life? Or have they moved from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship, often crossing over partners? Because if they have moved from one to the next, often crossing over partners, it's the narcissistic person that changed. You'll often find that a narcissist gets over their ex by moving straight in with somebody new. The old supply of a narcissist often gets over the relationship by staying single and finding themselves. They'll claim that the ex abused them, that they did absolutely everything for the ex and the ex did absolutely nothing for them. That they provided financially everything for the ex and the ex just lied and stole from them. Now, as a narcissistic person can financially abuse, we can all have that ex that has financially abused us. However, when a narcissist has taken credit cards out in somebody else's name, it's the narcissist who is at fault. They can claim that the ex has cheated on them. People can cheat on other people. With a narcissistic person, it's a repeat pattern of behaviour. And you'll often find out that it wasn't the ex that cheated on them, it was the narcissist that cheated on the ex. And they have a pattern of behaviour of cheating on their partners, often with their partner's friends and family and neighbours and work colleagues. You might be entering into a relationship where they're cheating on who they're with to be with you, claiming that they're just living together for the sake of the children that they don't get on anymore, that they're waiting to split assets, to move into different houses. If somebody is with somebody, regardless of what they are telling you, they are not the kind of person you want to be dating. If someone comes to you through cheating, they will often leave you by cheating. They claim that the ex is crazy, completely off the rocker, going crackers, obsessed with them, stalking them, won't leave them alone, won't stop messaging them. And this can kind of seem true to one extent because they've usually devalued the ex to such an extent that the ex is in the depths of despair and looks like they're going crazy as they're trying to work reality out through all the gaslighting that the narcissist has put them through. Or the narcissist has kept, over, kept a hold of some of the ex's most treasured belongings so the ex is trying to get those back and messaging or the narcissist just hasn't given any answers any closure they've just ghosted so the ex is trying to get in touch they might be getting in touch with the narcissist friends and family to see if everything's okay the narcissist is only going to show the, the side of the story that they want you to see there are two sides to a story you could say there's three sides to a story. There's your side, their side, and somewhere in the middle there's the truth. When it comes to a narcissistic person, the story is usually completely different to the situation at hand. They might claim that the ex drives by, and if the ex is trauma bonded, the ex might be driving by. However, you've got to look at the bigger picture and recognise who did what to whom and you can often tell that by discovering which person has a past history of lying cheating deceiving not being able to hold down a stable relationship yet jumping from relationship to relationship they can claim that the ex is bitter and jealous and don't speak to the ex because the ex will just want to split you two up because you two have got something really really special going on again to make you work harder to please the narcissistic person and also to stop you from speaking to the ex and potentially finding out the truth now as people once they've been deceived when they've been cheated on can be angry can be hurt can be resentful and can seek revenge it's easy to fall for the narcissist lies rather than recognising that the narcissist lacks the empathy to care about people and can mistreat people in such a way that people are looking for justice or people are looking to warn you, to protect you, 
to stop you going through the pain they went through. Their ex lied about them and they're not allowed to see their children, to which they might not be allowed to see their children or they might simply not be bothered about seeing their children because they don't want to take responsibility. If their children aren't at an age where they can give the narcissist enough supply, the narcissist isn't interested. If the children are at an age where they're taking attention away from the narcissist, the narcissist is not interested, yet they're not going to take responsibility for this. They're going to pass the blame. They're going to get you to feel sorry for them. They might even get you to help fight for those children. And it's only later down the line when you're in the same situation that you can recognise what the narcissist did. The ex is depressed. The ex is an addict of some form. The ex might be addicted to something. We can all have addictions to one thing or another. You don't have to be a narcissistic person to have an addiction. Narcissistic people are more prone to having addiction, but you do not have to be a narcissist to be addicted. However, if you're talking to somebody that takes substances regularly, illegal or not, who's claiming that their ex is the addict, you need to be questioning the person you are with and not the ex because you're not with the ex. The ex is none of your business. If the ex likes a drink, that's up to the ex. If the ex takes a substance they shouldn't be doing, that's up to the ex. What about the person you're with? Do they like a drink? Do they turn around and say, you know what I'm like if I haven't had a drink? That's a big red flag that it's time to go. Any smear campaigns you heard from a narcissistic person about an ex-partner, please do add those into the comments for those reading through, as there are plenty of them. If you're dating somebody like this, the only way to go is to go no contact. There's major red flags there. It's a pattern of behaviour, it's who they are. They might lead you to believe that they will change for you, Yes, when we've met the one, I believe that we can move things along quickly. So they might lead you to believe that they will change for you. However, they won't. They will do the same to you that they did to the ex for as long as you will put up with it, for as long as they can gain supply from it, for as long as they don't fully sink you so they're no longer getting the attention they believe they're entitled to from you. When these red flags occur, no contact is the way to go. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour. To give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to, I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.